okay hi everyone and welcome back welcome to my uh, youtube channel and in this playlist we are talking about t3 stack and in the recent couple of videos we have done a lot we already built a simple authentication apis using nextjs then in the last video we built a crud apis using nestjs so we were using prisma sqli database we can just use uh, any kind of database with the prisma so we just need to specify in the prisma schema file now what is next so in the next video like in the current video what we are going to do here is we are going to utilize these things so let me remove this wrapper we are going to utilize these two pieces one is the trpc another is a next auth so we have already seen that uh, the 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 effort in building a simple authentication using uh, our own apis let's say i'm just building auth apis in the next js auth login register and logout it's like a lot of effort you need to write a middleware which can maintain the session at the client side you need to capture the cookies and need to make api call and need to initialize the session inside a store so lots of things we are doing at the client end side so how we can get rid of that so i mean there is always a solution of using some some or the other library so i'm going to put this in between right what this is going to do is this is going to help me in building the simple authentication and i can integrate all different kind of stuff okay i can just integrate with login with the google login with the github login with the instagram anything all these providers are supported by next auth so next auth is going to sit here with the next js that is going to help us in providing a simple authentications now rest you can use uh, just prisma prisma with the postgres let's say here we can just use a docker compose here I will just use a docker compose and docker and docker container docker compose to spin up this container and we are just going to have a user entity so we will also store the data inside a user and we are going to write uh, migrations uh, for the prisma so how it is going to work it's still the same uh, implementation here we are just going to use this next auth so whenever the client is sending a request uh, you will be able to do the login and then using this next auth library we can use a get server side session and use session these are some custom hooks provided by next auth using which you don't need to do anything it's like very simple implementation and i hope that this library should have been there like before years then we can uh, we could have used next js more now adding authentication in next js is very simple very plain we can just do it in just very simple steps and also managing the session at the client end side is very easy what you need to do you just need to use use session hook here in the next js server side you need to create a trpc api endpoints so here i will be using trpc api endpoints that will be handling my authentication login uh, and the logout and it will push the session at the client end and in the server components so let's say uh, one of my client only component is making request to the next apis next js apis right so let's say here i have created a api let's say api users but here i need to check if user is already logged in or not so for all those cases next auth is providing get server side session where you can check session exist then only allow user to access the data so it's like how we are protecting the the routes api routes how we are protecting the pages at the client end side can also be provided by this next auth library which provides a youth session hook so it's all uh totally uh really interesting stuff i already created a video in the uber eats clone in the uber eats clone in the dashboard app admin dashboard app we are already using this next auth library for providing authentication and we are just using external service we are not storing the user in the database we have this external service which is user auth and we are using custom solution these apis are talking to this user auth service to get the the token and then it is initializing the session here we don't have external api here we are going to use this prisma only to store fetch the data and uh, once you are logged in we should be able to give you the list of users or let's say you also have another model like blog post and all so once you are logged in you can create a blog post all these kind of stuff can happen only if your session exists and how we know that your session exists using get server side session so it's really going to be a fun after that we are going to introduce trpc on top of all these things so this is our stack in this video right 
we are going to use a docker postgres prisma next auth next js react js and nx and the pnpm workspace so all this is happening inside pnpm workspace we are using this nx mono repo tool to automate things so this is our whole structure and this is where we are going to write our app so we have already worked on this app authentications and crud here now we are going to i'm going to create a copy of this and what should i name it because it's the, i mean i can start from scratch but it's all about uh, you can just create this application using create next app it will give you a simple uh, bare bone structure and then here i will just rename this to auth next auth because we are going to use next auth rest of the things would be same instead of building your own authentication route we are going to use next auth with uh, any social provider and here i will just change this package json to next auth and uh, here i will just do is it is that next js next auth here also i will just update this p3 stack it's already there okay and i can just see that in the nx console all these applications are popping up it's little slow but all the packages all the applications will be published here and we can just run all the build start all these commands directly from here okay so this is our plan and uh, we are going to move forward and here you can see now nx console is showing something it's really little slow i need to restart my vs code that's fine so here we are going to do the next talk so if you look into the package json what else we need to add on top of that we need to use the next talk library these i think we can remove so we are inside next auth i don't need uh, bcrypt js bcrypt uh, and do we need to prisma client we still need react hook forms we don't need this toaster typescript jord we don't need and uh, we are not managing the state store also so i i explored another library to manage the state in the in the next js it's just stand but we are not using any of these libraries so it's like very simple setup we have prisma client react react hooks react uh, react react dom post css prisma client the types typescript tailwind prisma we still need and i will just remove this okay our simple application now we will just all the required dependencies which next auth needed and then we will get started with this project so what we need to do is first we will just add the dependencies so here i will just go to next auth and here what how we need to do so first of all let's check uh, documentation a little bit again saying i already covered this video if you have already seen if you already know next auth implementation i have already covered this with the uber eats clone app so if you are already familiar you can skip this or if you want to learn this this from scratch then you can keep watching it okay so now uh, we can start adding the next auth in our project how we do it is pnpm add next auth so we will just add that in our package in our repository this is our folder and then i mean you can also look into the documentation how to do it like what all the apis which it exposes and how we can just get started the little bit documentation this is the routes you need to create inside a pages pages api auth and next auth.ts and here you will just create auth options and you just need to call next auth constructor right and you need to pass this this is going to handle all your sign in callback sign out login with the google login with the twitter login with the facebook all these requests will be handled by this particular api route you can say it is used spread operator so anything which comes after auth will be handled by next auth dot ts so now what we will do is we will just uh, build our application and in this uh, we will just start creating our api so we have added the, the next auth library app api this is next auth so okay i need to just clean up because i copied the the previous project right so i will just delete all these things and inside we can keep we, we can also delete all these components 
and here inside API I need to create all these routes so inside API I will create auth folder so this is auth folder inside that I'm just going to create API auth new folder which will have a dot 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 and this is next auth okay inside next auth we are going to have this should be a folder so inside new folder this is the dot dot next auth and inside that I'm going to have a routes.ts routes ts file here we are just going to get the next auth so how we do it import auth options from so we already have this library uh, first of all we need to get the auth options which we are going to create so this is next auth from next auth okay and what we will uh, export from this is the handler handler as get and handler as post handler as get and handler as post these both uh, both these calls we are going to handle and how we are going to get handler handler equal to auth and here we are going to pass auth options okay so auth options we are going to create inside our lib so inside source we can create a lib folder inside the lib uh, we have lots of code content i will just get rid of these things and inside the lib we are going to create a simple what do we need uh, inside this we can just create a prisma.ts i import the prism. we will we would need that file so i will just restore that back prisma.ts and another thing we need is auth.ts or auth options so here we are going to configure what all auth options you need for this next auth library so here we can just create export const auth options which is of type next auth options okay we do have a type next auth option is coming from next auth and here we can specify all the auth options like pages so we do have a sign in page which start with forward slash login so i mean i i have already explained all these things like what all things you need you need section how we are managing the session session is being managed by so there are different strategies we have database strategy or utility strategy so i'm going to manage the token i mean i'm going to manage the session using the using this utility token and then we have providers the providers are like the default providers so we can use uh, google providers and all so all these providers are available in the next auth library so we are going to use three different providers google provider github provider and the credential provider and how we register them we can just register them by passing the client id and the client secret so this is my google provider and the github provider and then i do have my third provider which is credential provider that uses username password uh, that means is you have a login form okay through the login form uh, you are entering the username and the password and based on that you are doing login so there are multiple mechanisms you can do the login with the google login with the github login with the facebook so based on that you will be using these providers and credential provider that means uh, if you want to use a custom solution where you are passing the username password uh, from the form in that you can use it so the name is sign in and here we can pass the credentials credentials will be like okay what all you have? i do have email email field inside the credentials so i have an email which is so it's like a form submission we will submit a form on the login so here we are just specifying okay what is the email and what is the password inside the credentials i'm going to pass both the properties so uh, name credentials okay there is some okay with the authorized method is missing so we will just add that async i think the method name is authorize that is taking credentials as the input 
so this authorized function is going to handle uh, the authentication right so this is simple credential function and this is async authorize so what will happen is once uh, everything you passed and this authorized function will validate okay whatever you have entered as a email and the password is this valid so first of all we can do some checks okay so still we are just writing these auth options for the next auth library so credentials which is type any let's say we'll just override the type credentials dot email if we are not passing any of these properties credential dot password that means we cannot proceed further we can just return null otherwise you have entered the the credentials and what we need to do next is we just need to process so here we are going to use uh, prisma so let's look into the prisma here we can use a uh, prisma schema and we can use postgres so how to do the changes in the schema prisma so prisma client js provider is we will change this to the postgres sql our provider is postgres equal I always do the typo here post gray sql and then database url and then we can have just a simple user table which is id name and email is unique and the password is a string let's keep it simple okay now i need to have a database url because we are using uh postgres so i need to have a docker compose which is already there okay not there right i need to add the postgres container on top of this so let's do this and we, i will do docker compose up postgres container will be there and i will update the env file here to populate the database url pointing to the postgres database okay and then we will just do the connections we will just do the prisma migrate generate and uh, we will just use a prisma client to access to our database so here we will update the docker compose file that will also use this postgres container okay mongo and postgres user all these things are fine test api database volume mapping this is test api is the database we are here and i will do docker compose up let's see if my docker containers are up and running i will do docker compose down for those which are not running and this is my terminal i will do docker compose up so it will spin up the container for with postgres and the mongodb i need only postgres so then we can just connect to this database url so my database url is localhost uh, development password is a password username is api i will put that inside dot env file my database url which is somewhat like this api development pass test api and you can see test api is the database we have used here okay so that is good i will my container is already running what i can do next is i can just start playing with the prisma so this is my prisma next to i will just delete these migrations because these are old this is dev db we don't need it this is sqlite db this is my prisma schema file so what i will do now i'll start playing with the prisma npx generate so it will generate the client for me okay i'm in the wrong directory first of all go to my next auth folder and npx prisma generate and then prisma migrate so it will okay there is a typo migrate that okay so what it will do it it will look into your table and here i'm just doing as a user baseline table okay and it has created this table in the postgres you can see this is your sql file that means it has created this user table uh, for this particular schema so what is the next thing we are going to do we can access this uh, user in our auth options so what we need to do if so we, we came back to our code now prisma migration is done we have a prisma client available now what we will do is we simply can access 
our Prisma client. So how we do it? If the credentials are being passed, const user equal to await Prisma. So we also need to have a Prisma uh, library available. So inside our lib, so inside our lib we already have a Prisma client. So I will just try to import it here inside lib Prisma. So it's the same client. We are using the same code every example. We will just import this Prisma. Prisma we have imported from this lib. Okay, that's not uh, okay. This is in the same file. Let's find Prisma dot user. Okay, that's not coming. That's a disadvantage. I just need to because uh, I need to just uh, stop the VS code and start it again so that my typings can be populated properly. And here I can see uh, now I can access user. You can see dot. I uh, can see user and here we can just do find unique based on email property. So where clause email is email which you are passing inside a credentials. Credentials dot email. Okay. So if user exists, so it is like a same simple query we are running that uh, if user exists, then try to access that. So here, uh, if user found the next step is comparing the the password, the past password with the, the user password, which is there in the database. So here, if uh, user is null, let's say, and uh, it's like a negation condition we are uh, doing. Okay, we need the bcrypt library. I moved it earlier. Bcrypt dot compare so bcrypt provides this compare utility compare i will try to import this so credential dot password will be compared with the password which we have inside a user which is already had password okay if this is there then return null any of these two conditions if user is null then return null if user is not null or the compare password matches so this compare we need to add a uh, pnpm add bcrypt yes i think that is the that we need to add pnpm add bcrypt js okay then it will give us the compare method which we can import from bcrypt js okay i can import it on the top that's available compare authorized so that is like when uh, this is the credential provider you entered username password first of all email found and then we are comparing the password if everything goes expected if user is not null and uh, password so this is the negation the opposite condition of it right so if this doesn't return null that means user exists and the password matches because await compare that means this is true that means this is false right so everything is good and here we can just return these attributes so by default we can just please okay i'm just returning all these random key name email and id this is what is going to be inside the token so this is a simple credential provider i can just try to zoom it a little bit and show it the full view so this is a credential provider this is the google provider and github provider inside credential provider we have all these different options now next thing we are going to do is the callbacks so in after this credential provider and the providers the next thing we have is the callbacks and inside a callbacks we can just define okay what all attributes we are going to have in session so we can customize the session which is going to be available at the client end side and then we have i think jwt that also we can just define okay this is callback inside callback the first is session i guess there is another callback we can add why there is a internet typo so we have a session first and then there is a jwt so this is arrow function okay session and jwt this is also another function inside a callback 
So inside JWT also we can define okay how we are going to encode the properties inside the token. So we are also going to look into the, the documentation. I have already talked about all these things a lot many times. So I'm not giving much into that information, but we will we'll talk about it. What is the use of this session callback and what does this JWT callback does? So this callback is called whenever the session is checked at the client end side, like when you are doing a use session, get session, and this session we can use to override the attributes. Let's say I want to uh, put a lot more information on the session. So what I'm going to return inside this, first of all, we need to return something. So my current session I have. Apart from that, I'm going to provide a user object that contains session.user. And I can override some more properties like ID, token.id and then uh, them key so, like if you wanted to customize the, the behavior then we can do this token dot random key so what all these properties these all properties are coming from credential provider because here we are returning id email name so all these token properties we are just encoding them in the session also so it's random key okay so when you try to get a session this whole object you will receive and inside that you will have a user object that contains the id random key and the session object which is coming from uh, the session so it's like we are just overriding some properties and here inside token if user is there uh, user object we are passing so first of all we'll get the id so this is zwt if user object is there and we'll try to decode the information user okay and then what we are going to return from this is token existing token payload and id which is user dot id and then random key which is u dot random key so all these things are going hand in hand then we can return the token so this jwt if user is there and then we can just return so what we are doing in this callback there is a session and then there is jwt in jwt also we try to enrich this it's i think random key does not exist on type user Okay, we'll create it as unknown as any i'm just uh, suppressing the typescript error so these are the two callbacks so session and jwt so this is whole this completes our uh, auth configuration which we are passing to this uh, api auth this particular route and here i can just now import auth options from lib auth so now this is my handler is ready for the the next talk so at server side we are we have already this routes now what else we need to do we are allowing user to do the login with the email and the password so we need uh, some mechanism to create a user also so inside api we have auth similarly we can also create a register api let's create another folder it's register and we'll create a routes dot ts there route.ts okay and inside route.ts it's a simple implementation what we are going to do is we will just get the the payload from the front from the request export sync function because this is the post api and it is going to access the next request object next request object and here we will just wrap everything inside a try catch and here we will just to access all the properties which you are passing and how we decode the json object which is coming from the request request.json this is how we do it and you can just have some type also like uh, what all properties we are going to have inside this so either you create a type or just create a override it like assign a type okay it will have a name email 
and password these three properties it is going to have so here i will get all these things name email and password either you create a separate interface or do it like this and then here get password we just create a hash marker of password so we will just do await hash Wait hash we will just pass the password and salt value and this hash we can get from the bcrypt.js so we get the hash so this is the hash password and how we create a user a using prisma wait prisma prisma dot user this is the prisma client dot user dot create and it accepts the data inside data you can pass okay what is the name so we already getting the name password which is we are overriding has password and then we have email so whatever the email you are passing you can just do a two lowercase also so we don't face any issues here so this is the user object and then you can just send a response back to the client okay user has been created we can just send a next response dot json next response we can get if there is an error then we can just show internal server error or you can create a custom error handler for this next response this is error is of type any okay it will just send a 500 status code okay so simple register api so when you are hitting api register by passing name email password we will just store the data inside uh, the database there can be a use case like you can also try to find if user already exists but that's fine we will just create a user with this email so this is how you will create a user and then we also need to create a session session route to check the server side session so here i will just use session route.ts so how we can check the session server side like say if you wanted to get the session from uh, the apis then get server side session already there at the server side you can check if the session exists so we are going to use that we are just going to expose this api endpoint so this is request type request and what it is having is call session so this is how you will get a session at the server side get server side session get server session and you just pass all options and here if session exists so what you need to do is if session exists then return the session otherwise so we just need to return a simple response so if session exists if session null then you can just you are, you are not logged in if session is there then authenticated is true and you can just return the session object the whole session object so you can call this method to get the, the session object and get server side session is the method at uh, api level which will tell us okay user is logged in or not okay now we can create a, our login and register all these methods so inside app we have this api we can create other folders let's say login and register and profile so app login and we are not going to build any complex solution we just use simple forms submit the form create a user and do the login and then check the profile if the profile contains the data or not so let's see what we will write inside our uh, login profile and register profile means once you are logged in we wanted to show okay these are your credentials username email and the password so we'll just create a page.tsx on all these uh, fronts page.tsx in the login in the register and inside our profile and what we are going to write inside uh, page.tsx so all these are third components right uh, the child components of those can be a client only components which is going to use this uh, react state management using hooks use effect and any kind of uh, client side client side stuff you can do inside that so export default async async function profile so this is Server component, right? And how we can get the session in server component? Post session equal to what do we have? Update 
get server session and we can start the options because we have access it's a server side component and here if the session exists we can get the user object from the session if session does exist you can get the user and if everything is there then we can just show the profile information with the information like okay i wanted to just show user dot name that will tell me okay user exists and this is the name of the user okay so we can just show okay if uh, user is there something like that if user is there try to show this information otherwise if user is not there show the loading or something like that can use the ternary operator for with this and there are many ways of doing it if user is there then user dot name otherwise not logged in and you won't be able to come here on the profile page if you are not logged in so what do we have we can have some kind of a redirection if user doesn't exist you can show the empty page or just show not logged in so this is simple profile page now we can create a simple login page and so for the login page we need to have some simple header this is the login page and this is the register page and we are going to create a simple header component where we can do that inside this component i already have some old components i will delete them so i'm just going to create a header component so header component is also a server side component so it's a client only component you can say use client right and this is going to be imported in the server component so here i'm going to import this i'm already importing it login form we will create but this header header is actually child of the server component and this is the use client so this is the client side component here i if i wanted to access the state because there is a header on the login post there is, there is a header and, and on the header you want to know if user is already logged in or not so all those things we can do here so if user is logged in what we are doing is we are just doing a sign out and use session hook to get the user data okay so here if you look into this code we are getting the session and inside a session we already have a user object so we are using the use session hook at the client side pages so this is the header similarly there is a sign up sign up form and the register form so inside this header this is how we will get the user data so if user is there then show the login and register if user is there then just show the profile and log out otherwise show the login and register and how we are doing logout this logout is coming from the next auth react here you can just call call the sign out method it will clear out the session so it's going to trigger a call and it will clear out clear out the session sign out and similarly we also do the sign in so if i go to the register is so here we are going to create a register form So that we will create here inside this login form we are going to create a login form so this is the component i will work on the login form and then we will just write, copy and implement a sign up form so the login form is simple uh, we are going to create a simple login page inside this so we can create a form.tsx and how the login form looks like it's all going to be using the simple simple form it's arrow function and inside this we are going to access the router uh, that router i mean the the yeah, next js router yes is use router okay this is use router not that's a next okay i think this is coming from next navigation always remember this is coming from next navigation not next router otherwise you will get error in the latest version and then because this is a form we, i can have all these uh, use state and this is the client only component always do not forget this because this is client side use client and here i can have a loading set loading this is using use state hook and initially login is false and then i also have the the form state 
right value set form value so it's like a youth state hook to maintain the form fields so this is an object which contains two things email which is initially empty and then password which is also empty okay these are the form values loading and the router and for the error also i can have error set error error is in a slice with empty error and error this is in a slice with an empty string and then because here we are going to write as form so we will write that return this is a jsx form and on submit we are going to submit the form so i will just try to write some part of it on submit this is on submit form and here we are going to call handle submit this is where you are submitting the form and inside this you are going to just write the form fields and all this is handle submit so inside the handle submit first of all we are passing the event of event object is dot form element react dot form event sorry and then here i can just do event dot prevent default that is method is there and in fact i catch i will be doing the submission of the form with the data if there is error we will deal with that so if it is started so we will just do a set loading is true i have started a form submission and set form values uh, because here values okay so here i'm just submitting the form so what we need to do once the submission is done we will reset the form also before that we, will, we are just going to make this call await sign in so this sign in is going to come from next auth and here i'm just going to provide a way how i'm doing a sign in using credential provider so here you can see all these different provider types so i'm just using credentials here sign in is coming from next or react and here i will just pass the, all the options redirect uh, false after redirection of sign in email so we have form values dot email password form value dot password okay and then callback url you can specify okay how you want to do callback uh, like where you want to navigate once the sign in is done so search parameter i'm going to get the search parameter so let's say if you already have some search parameter you can get it use search parameter i can import from next navigation so this is just a callback url we are passing okay so this is simple await so that means it should be async okay simple handle submit right once the handle submit is done we can just set a loading false i will talk about this callback how we are setting it set loading false and uh, here we also need to deal with the response because response dot error if uh, first of all response is not null that contains error that means we can just push to the router router dot push to the callback URL. Otherwise, we got error. We just do the set error. Invalid. Okay. We will refactor this code a little bit. I'm just trying to push as much as we can. So here, if there is an error, what we will do is set loading still false and set error. We will set the error. Okay. So this error is of type any for now and this this is a simple form which will which is going to contain all the input fields and all right so when you are changing when you are typing something you are going to trigger an event so here i'm going to have these input fields with the labels and all so my input fields are simple input type form values form value and handle change we can skip the styling for now and handle change how we define the handle change i can just write a simple dom event handle change 
that is going to take the form in this event. So it will accept uh, event of which is of type change event. Change event of type HTML input type. HTML input element. Okay. And then what it will do is we are going to get the name and the value from the event object. And we can just do set form values, sort form set, set form value and my current form value. And here I can just do okay the name. So you, you, you can you can have n number of fields. You can use the same handler. You don't need to create a handle change for each and every input text field. So this is coming from event dot target. So we got the name and value. I will just write this handler for each and every input text field. So here you can also add some kind of a label. So this is the first input text field. Then we can have another input text field, which is this is the email because here you can say type is email is password and name is password. Same property is required because we are using it to override the values, right? Name and the value. So this is input type text field, and then we have a button type submit because we have own submit method. When you click on to this, on submit method will be triggered. And here is uh, okay. Here we can check if the loading is happening, then just show the loading message. When the loading is happening, then show that the loading, otherwise, show the signing. Okay, and uh, this is all submit function, submit method. We just put the button. I'm just going to create a simple raw structure of this simple sign in form. We will customize it and we will make it a little bit prettier. Okay, and then if you already have provided the GitHub and the Google credentials, then how that uh, buttons will work, right? Because at the end, you are just going to create a simple icons like, okay, A, H, R, F. So these are just a buttons which I'm going to add class name and here what we are going to do when you are doing a click action on this what will how we are going to define that you are going to use the sign in with the because it takes a provider sign in and here inside this you can specify the provider the so provider let's say I'm passing Google okay sign in with the Google and then you can specify the call that you are what will happen once the login is done So similarly, okay, what because this is I have added on the anchor tag. So I can just pass the role attribute, which is so similarly, if you want to the login with GitHub, okay, here you can just specify this as a GitHub. This is Google and this is GitHub. So these are just like on click actions we have done. So just add a closing tags for this and here we can specify login with the Google login with the github login with Google and login with github and when you click on to this it will use these providers to trigger the action what is wrong here on click so I will just add the on click action better if we do it something like this that was the mistake because on click it won't call directly it will call this sign in method when you click on to this button okay so this is a simple sign in and we already know how to fetch the session at the server components you get server side session and at the client components we have we will be using use client and this is how we can fetch the session using use session hook. These are the only the major important parts in this particular section. Now it's all about building the UI, just making it looking look nice and then we will test it end to end by just doing a login, sending the email and the password by just creating a sign up form and creating a user and then just doing the login. So let's see this end to end because this is the only core I wanted to show you. We already know how the Prisma works. 
with the next js we have this a simple tiny table here inside auth so we are just using this prisma schema this prisma schema contains only simple user model and we are just using this jwt strategy we are not using a database strategy so all the exchanges will happen through this jwt token and we are overriding this session so if you look into our lib here we are overriding these callbacks means we are customizing what is there inside a session and what is there inside a token so when you do the huge session you are going to get this object okay and this object is being populated through the token so token is getting enriched here so whatever whatever you have inside token we are adding id and random key on top of that inside the token so this is what it is going to return and this will be provided to the session okay so that's it let's see this end to end in the video okay so now let's check on the demo part uh, what all variables we need that's also important this env file so we also need auth secret and next auth url auth secret can be anything this is used by the next auth library and here i will just do npm run dev onto this folder and npm run dev it will start my application so apart, apart from that we haven't done anything i just have a simple register piece i just modified the styling for my forms that is not important that's not uh, our objective for this video like styling and all so this is our simple page i will just try to do the logout that will just log out my page okay the application not started okay i have logged out i can create uh, my user so you can let's set demo and this is demo demo and my password is demo demo i will do the sign up and then it will take me to the login it so this is my login page and here i will just pass the same demo at the demo 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 and i will do the sign in so it will take me to the profile and you can see i can see my profile information with the email and the, the username I mean we already getting the server side session in the profile page we can just do the the name user.name and user.email and I can just do the logout so it's like a simple authentication demo I just try to put here in this code and you just need to worry about these environment variables database URL next auth secret and next auth URL apart from that you can also test these endpoints so what are our API endpoints is because it's all happening internally using next auth and we are just writing our pages and we are testing it end to end so this is all about how you can integrate next auth what else you can do is inside this lib we have these auth options right you can also configure the google client id and google client secret and all i will try to put my google client id and try to see if it works so inside env client id and i will try to restart my application so in that case uh, what will happen is it will just try to log in with the google and this auth options it will return internally this user object which we are returning from here and it will give you the session and it will give you the token okay and now if i do the login login with the uh, google so it will ask me okay deleted client that means uh, i have used this application and i then i deleted this auth credentials but what you can do is you just need to create a application on the google developer console and put this client id and the client secret that's it using that you should be able to log in with the google and then the session will be initialized and we don't need to just create this authentication this credential provider i created additionally to just talk about it but you can skip this credential provider you can just use this google provider and the github provider and you can log in with these social providers i mean i have already talked about these things you just put the github id and github secret put them in the dot env and just do npm run dev and you should be able to do the login through the google and github so that's all about this next auth demo 
Now the remaining part we are going to talk about is end to end all these things together with the TRPC server. Okay, then we will just wrap up this uh, T, uh, this T3 stack and we will build end to end. Uh, you can say Twitter clone. Twitter clone will use the Prisma, Next Auth, and it is going to use this Next JS APIs. So in the Next JS APIs, first we will validate user is logged in. Then you can fetch the tweets. You can create a new tweets and all. And uh, this is all Tailwind, TypeScript, uh, TRPC and all these things we are going to combine together to build that Twitter clone application. Okay, that's it guys. If you really like the content, it's all about T3 stack I'm covering. And uh, next video is we are, we are going to use TRPC server also with the next auth. So with the next auth, you can you will just do the login. After login, you can just try to you can try to access the data. So for that data, you always need to check does your session exist at the server side? Yes, then you can just access the data through the TRPC endpoints, TRPC handler and TRPC is going to talk to the Prisma client to fetch the data and give you the data in your routes.